Hi, welcome to another Stream Developers tutorial. In this video, we will build a Swift UI app to record and send audio or voice messages. You will discover a new way to press and hold a button to record your voice and send to other people using StreamChat iOS. Let's begin with a starter Swift UI project. I will show you how to install the Chat SDK for Swift UI. We will add the voice recording support. Then I will show you some customization options. Finally, we will add the voice messaging support for a UI kit app. In the final project, you will see a recording button beside the send button. A single tap displays a recording tip view. If you hold the recording button for more than two seconds, it will start automatically. Once you release the finger after recording, it will go to the message composer view. Over here, you can play back the audio or cancel the recording. To send the voice recording to other people, tap the send button. It will then display as a message attachment. So over here, you can play back the audio or react to it using the available reactions. To get started, go to the stream website and the developer select chat messaging. Over here, we have all the available SDKs. So here you pick the UI components for iOS. If you are new to StreamChat iOS, we have two excellent tutorials. One for UIKit. So this shows you how to build a chat messaging app for UIKit. We also have a Swift UI tutorial that does the same thing. There are two projects accompanying this tutorial, one for UIKit and one for Swift UI. So in this GitHub repository, you go to the folder iOS Swift and find the UIKit version. Over here, I have uploaded that as a zip file. That is iOS voice messaging.zip. Let's go back and find the Swift UI version. For that, you go to the folder iOS Swift UI and select Swift UI voice messaging. You can download the project as a zip file or go through all these folders and check the individual Swift files. Let's go through the Starter Swift UI project and look at where we will begin from and do some configurations before we add the voice messaging support. In this project, I have already configured the chat messaging support for the app. If you are new to StreamChat Swift UI, check this tutorial to learn more about how to configure the chat SDK to work with your Swift UI app seamlessly. In the project navigator, the file that is already open here is a configuration file. So we follow all these steps to set up the SDK to work with the Swift UI app. In the file custom channel list, we display the default channel list from the chat SDK. I have also added these folders. The first one is for customization. We will add the files later. The animation folder is also purposely for customizing the voice messaging experience to add animations. So this is the Starter Swift UI project we will begin with. In this section, I will show you how you can fetch the chat SDK from GitHub and install it in the Swift UI app. I have it already installed, so I'm not going to complete the operation. Let's go to the toolbar in Xcode and click Fire, Add Package Dependencies. In the search field on the right, I'm going to paste this URL. You can find this link in the description of the video. So this is going to fetch the chat SDK from the GitHub repository. The voice messaging support for SwiftUI is available for the version 4.6 and upwards. So let's click Add Package. So you can see here the app is grayed out because I have the chat SDK already installed. Otherwise, I will go ahead and click Add Package. Once you install the chat SDK, it will appear under Package Dependencies. So let's expand this. You can see here we have StreamChat. That is the core chat SDK. You can use StreamChat only if you want to build a completely custom chat experience. StreamChat SwiftUI consists of already made SwiftUI components for building chat experiences. Since we are building a voice messaging app for SwiftUI, the app will require the user's microphone for recording. So we need to configure privacy for using the user's microphone in Xcode. Similarly, the chat messaging part will require the use of the user's photos. So we need to configure the privacy for photos library as well. Let's configure these two privacies. To do that, we select the root folder of the project and head to the info tab by hovering the mouse cursor on any of the keys. There is a plus icon. By clicking that, we can add a new privacy. Let's go to the privacy section and select the one for microphone. 
Once we add that, we can add a custom text, but let's leave it empty to get a default message prompt from the system. Let's click the plus icon again and add the one for photos. We also leave the value field empty. So we have microphone usage description and photo library usage description. So once people use the app for the first time, they will get this message to allow or disallow the use of their microphone. If you run the app at this point, it will display the channel list view. You can select any of the channel list items and go to the messages view. In the messages view, we can compose a new message and send it to others. Looking at the message composer at the bottom of the screen, we don't have the option to send voice messages. Let's add that in the next. We can add the voice messaging support at the entry point of the app, which contains the configuration of the chat SDK. That is the main project file. To be able to add the voice recording support, we need to add the feature as an attachment type. The chat SDK allows you to include attachments like files, media, such as audio and video, and links to messages. We have several built-in attachment types, but the one we are implementing in the SwiftUI app is the voice recording attachment type. You can learn more about the other available attachment types in our documentation. We did not see the voice recording feature after running the app in the previous section because this feature is turned off by default. To use the feature, we have to enable it in this file that contains the configuration of the chat SDK. So over here, you can see I have added that as step five. So let's look at the other steps. With step one, you create an instance of the low level chat client. And then under step two, you create an instance of stream chat. Under step three, you connect a user to the back end using a hard coded token. For a production app, this should be generated from your server side. For testing, you can also sign up for a stream account and use your API key to generate a token. So let's add the voice recording support under step five. Let's add the constant recording possible. So the constant we are defining here will serve as the voice recording feature. So we need to assign that to a Swift utility class to show that the voice recording feature is a secondary priority task and users can use the actual chat messaging app, which has a primary focus on text messaging. Since the voice recording is considered as a secondary priority task, that is why it is disabled in the SDK by default when you configure the chat SDK to work with your SwiftUI app. So let's put utils and parentheses. So here we will add a message composer config. The composer config takes the Boolean parameter is voice recording enabled. So let's add that and set it to true. After this step, we need to add the utils parameter to the stream chat initialization over here. So let's bring the utils parameter and use the variable we defined here, signifying this feature is a secondary priority task and users can still use the actual voice messaging app, which focuses on text messaging without the voice recording feature. So for this reason, the voice recording feature is turned off by default when you add the chat messaging support for your SwiftUI app. So this is all we need to do to enable voice recording support for the SwiftUI chat messaging app. When we run the app, it will still display the chat channel list. By going to the messages view, you can see we now have a microphone icon appearing beside the send button at the compose area. With a single tap, it displays the recording to view. To start recording, you need to press and hold the microphone button for more than two seconds. After recording, you can release your finger and the recording will go to the message composer view. Here you can play back the audio or cancel the recording. To confirm the recording, you just need to tap the send button. Once you send the voice message, you can also react to it using reactions or perform other available actions. This is all about how you can enable the voice messaging support for your stream chat Swift UI app. Let's look at the customization options in the next. In the animation folder, let's look at the animation we have in this file. The animations you see here are example of how you can customize the recording view after integrating the chat SDK into your app. You can, for example, swap the count up timer and the ongoing recording view with a slide to cancel animation. Additionally, you can change the SDK's default recording log view with a custom log animation view you see here. 
we will not implement these animations, but I just wanted to show you how you can customize the recording view and implement your own animations or other views. For the customization in this section, we will change the recording to view with our own implementation using TipKit. The TipKit framework from Apple provides a convenient way to show new features or hidden features in your app to users. When we run the app, single tapping the microphone button shows the recording to view. Let's replace it with a TipKit implementation. To do this customization, we need to use the Chat SDK's View Factory protocol. You can learn more about the View Factory protocol in our documentation. The link is found in the description of the video. To add the customization implementation, let's go to the folder Custom UI Factory and add a new Swift file. Let's name it Custom Recording UIs. Great. We don't need the preview, so let's delete it and import Stream Chat Swift UI. We also don't need a struct, so let's delete it as well. Let's create a class Custom Factory. We should make this class conform to the SDK's View Factory protocol. Then here we define the following properties. Over here we inject the SDK's chat client and define the Custom View Factory class as a shared property. To customize UI components in the SDK, there are some ready-made Swift UI methods we can use. For our voice messaging use case, we need to use the method make composer recording to view. I encourage you to check the other methods you can use to change, for example, the recording log view or the main recording view and others. You can find all of them in our documentation. I will add a link to the description of the video. So over here, let's add the function make composer recording to view. Then we can change the implementation here to conform to a standard Swift UI view. So let's use some view. So over here, we have to define the view we want to show. That is the custom tip view we want to display. We don't have that yet, so let's add a new file. I will control click here and add a new file. Let's call this custom recording tip view. So we can now go back and add it here. In our custom recording tip view, we have to import tipkit. That will allow you to display hidden and new features of the app to users. To learn more about TipKit, you can check the Apple documentation. Then in the body computed property, we will add a navigation stack. In the navigation stack, we append a toolbar item consisting of a button. Then we can tap the button to show a tip view. We don't have this view yet, so let's create another struct. I will remove the preview here and add the new struct. That is the favorite tip view. So here we define the title of the tip and the message we want to display. Using TipKit, you can also define some options and rules. Here we specify that after displaying the tip to users for the third time, they don't need to see it again. And over here, you can define your own set of rules. We still have an error because we need to define this property. Let's add it here. The last thing we need to do is to update the app scene at the entry point of the app. At this point, it displays the default chat channel list without any customization. Once you implement your own customization methods, you need to tell the SDK to pick the customization instead of the default chat channel list. So let's scroll to where we have the app scene. So you can see it is displaying the default chat channel list. Now we need to pass the custom view factory class we defined here as a parameter of the chat channel list. So let's put view factory and use the custom factory class. Finally, when the app launches, we also need to display the tip view we just added. So here we specify the display frequency as immediate and perform a basic error checking. So this is all we need to do to implement our custom recording tip view. For other customization options, I encourage you to check our documentation. You can find the link in the description of the video. After running the app, if you now tap the recording button, it will display the custom tip kit implementation instead of the default recording tip view that comes with the SDK. This is all I have for you for the Swift UI version of the app. If your app does not support Swift UI yet, you can download the UI kit version from GitHub. I have the chat messaging part of the UI kit version already set up. So let's look at how we can enable the voice recording support in the next. I have the UI kit version of the app open in Xcode. If you run it, you will see the chat channel list view when the app launches.
that is similar to the Swift UI version, tap in any of the list items, you go to the messages view. At the message compose area, you can see there is no option to send voice messages. As I said before in the Swift UI version, the voice recording feature is considered as a secondary priority task, so it is disabled by default. In the UIKit version, we can enable the voice recording with a single line of code. We can do that in scenedelegate.swift. So let's add the implementation here. Over here, we need to use the component property is voice recording enabled and set it to true. So when you now run the app and go to the messages view, you will now see the microphone icon near the send button at the compose area. And we can use it to record our voice in the same way we did in the Swift UI app. So this is all I have for you in this video. I showed you how to implement voice chat in the Swift UI app using Stream. We enabled the voice recording support for a Swift UI app with the main focus on text messaging. We looked at how you can customize the voice recording experience with your own implementation. Eventually, I showed you how to enable the voice messaging feature in a UIKit app powered by StreamChat iOS. I encourage you to check our documentation for more details about StreamChat iOS and SwiftUI and all the advanced features. Thanks for watching this video.